NASA plans has plans to slam spacecraft into the moon. Scientists are priming two spacecraft to slam into the moon's south pole to see if the lunar double whammy reveals hidden water ice. I guess this is one way to do it. Even though, well, I guess it's being done on the cheap. Scientists breathe lunar double whammy could reveal hidden ice in craters. I think that people are somewhat apprehensive about it because it seems violent or crude, but it's very economical, said the principal investigator of the mission at NASA's Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California. The Earth on Moon violence may raise eyebrows, but NASA's history shows that such missions can yield extremely useful scientific observations. So they say. NASA's previous lunar prospector mission detected large amounts of hydrogen at the moon's poles before crashing itself into a crater at the lunar south pole. Now, the much larger Lunar Crater and Observation Sensing Satellite LCROSS mission set for a February 2009 moon crash will take aim and discover whether some of that hydrogen is locked away in the form of frozen water. Yes, you will need water if you're going to have more manned missions to the moon or put them or put a manned base on the moon sometime in the future. Water is very essential because you can only carry so much. There must be water wherever you go, especially to have a manned lunar base. LCROSS will piggyback on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter LRO mission for an October 28th launch atop an Atlas V rocket equipped with a Centaur upper stage. While the launch will ferry LRO to the moon in about four days, LCROSS is in for a three month journey to reach its proper moon smashing position. Once within range, the Centaur upper stage doubles as the main 4,400 pound or 2,000 kilogram impactor spacecraft for the cross LCROSS. The smaller shepherding spacecraft will guide Centaur towards its target crater before dropping back to watch and later fly through the plume of moon dust and debris kicked up by Centaur's impact. The shepherding vehicle is packed with a light photometer a visible light camera and four infrared cameras to study the Centaur's lunar plume before it turns itself into a second impactor and strikes a different crater about four minutes later. The hunt for hydrogen. This payload delivery represents a new way of doing business for the center and the agency in general, said Daniel Andrews. The cross project manager at Ames. In a statement, the cross primarily is using commercial off-the-shelf instruments on this mission to meet the mission's accelerated development schedule and cost restraints. Yes, that part's about money. Anyway, figuring out the final destinations for the $79 million the cross mission is like trying to drive to San Francisco and not knowing where it is on the map. He and other mission scientists hope to use observations from LRO in the Japanese lunar orbiter to map crater locations before LCROSS the cross dives in. Nobody has ever been to the poles of the moon and there 
are very unique craters similar to Mercury where sunlight doesn't reach the bottom. Earth-based radar has also helped illuminate some permanently shadowed craters. By the time the cross arrives, it can zero in on its 19 mile, 30 kilometer wide targets within 328 feet, 100 meters. By understanding what's in these craters, we're examining a fossil record of the early solar system and what would have occurred at Earth three billion years ago. La Crosse is currently aiming at target craters Bostini and Shoemaker which they have likened to fantastic time capsules at 3 billion and 3.5 billion years old. La Crosse researchers anticipate a more than a 90% chance that the impactors will find some form of hydrogen at the poles. We take what we learn to the next step, whether it's rovers or more impactors. A head-on approach. The Deep Impact Mission made history in 2005 by sending a probe crashing into Comet Tempel-1. Besides Lunar Prospector's grazing strike on the moon in 1999, there are European Space Agency's Smart One satellite dove more recently into the lunar surface in 2006. The cross will take a much more head-on approach than either Lunar Prospector or Smart One, slamming into the moon's craters at a steep angle while traveling with greater mass at 1.6 miles per second. The overall energy of the impact will equal 100 times that of Lunar Prospector and kick up 1,102 tons of debris and dust. Supposedly, it's a cost-effective, relatively low-risk way of doing initial exploration. Scientists are now discussing similar missions for exploring asteroids and planets such as Mars. This is one way to do it, I guess. On the cheap crashing into the moon to find out if there's water. Yes, they will need water if they're going to have a manned lunar base on the moon sometime in the future. Which is highly very possible. Especially if they wish to continue on to Mars. Which is also highly probable and possible in the future. Manned exploration will come in the future.